Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zones. Thank you so much for joining another edition of Modern App Development on Salesforce. My name is Mohit, I'm a developer advocate here at Salesforce. Uh, and today's topic, we're gonna uh, talk about Lightning Web Components, and then we're gonna see how we can communicate using events. We'll also look at some slides around Lightning Message Service. We have Julian back. So Julian, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, thanks for uh, you know being part of the series. Um, so with that, Julian, let's uh, move on to our forward-looking statement. So please do not make any purchasing decision based on anything forward-looking that we make in this uh, presentation. Over to you, Julian. Hey, okay, hello you all. My name is Julian Duque. I'm a lead developer advocate here at Salesforce, working mainly with the Heroku team. And if you don't know me, I've been also streaming some Node.js and JavaScript content on Trail Live. I'm looking forward to add a little bit of my JavaScript and Node.js expertise to the Salesforce community. So very happy to be here with you, Mohit. Okay, thank you so much, Julian, again. Um, all right, so where we are in the series, right? So, um, you know, all of our episodes are actually live on our YouTube playlist as well as on Trailhead Live. So a lot of our content, uh, which we already sort of produced, it's already there live recorded. Um, and, you know, today we're going to discuss about, by the way, it's already December, you know, <laughs> so that's that's exciting that we are to the end of the, the year. Um, so, uh, so today again, we are going to discussing Lightning Web Components. In fact, we are uh, running a bit behind, so we're going to catch it up with, uh, you know, like live coding some of the li uh, Lightning Web Components that we have in the eCars application, and then we have some more sessions sort of lined up uh, for January uh, also and for you know coming weeks. All right, so with that, Julian, I want to take some time, uh, you know, so that we can run through some of the slides that we ran last session. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we are all coming out of an holiday, you know, uh, really very cold into uh, this topic, right? So I want to take some time and let's actually revise some of the content uh, that we covered in the in the end of the, the you know the sessions, and then we can get into the live code. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Lightning Web Components, right? Lightning Web Components uh, deliver modular components, you know, beyond our Lightning experience. That means we, we definitely use in our Salesforce apps, uh, but beyond that, there are a lot of other places that we use, like for example, uh, you know, standalone Lightning apps, Lightning flow screens, you can use it inside your Aura components, Visual Force pages, uh, you know, if you have an Outlook integration with Salesforce, you can build your own components, or if you have a Gmail integrations, or if you have a product like Snap-ins, you can use it on mobile, right? So we use Lightning Web Components, uh, you know, everywhere, really everywhere uh, in Salesforce, and it's slowly, be you know, becoming one of the, the cool and modern technologies here that all of our developers should uh, know about it. Uh, again, uh, you know, Lightning Web Components is built on top of Web Components. Now, Web Components is a standard from W3C, um, you know, and the reason why we pick to build on top of Web Components is A, because it's modern, it's interoperable, it's future-proof, and it's backward compatible. So, the you know, the Web Component itself is moving towards a very good direction, and that's why, uh, you know, we, we build our own uh, Lightning Web components on top of it. In fact, if you look at the standard code for, uh, you know, for building an application using just the web components, that is the pure web components, uh, you will find that you have to repeat a lot of code. Uh, you know, you, you might end up doing the same things again and again. So there is a need for a framework or a library or a compiler to sort of give us something, uh, a sugar on top of the web components. So that's the idea behind Lightning Web Components. It's an open source, uh, you know, framework. Um, we can we can call it as framework, uh, but it has an engine and a compiler, which kind of provides us a sugar on top of that web components. So your syntax that I showed you in the previous slide, which is verbose, becomes really simple, uh, you know, and we add a lot of the capability that an enterprise application requires. And we will see that, like, for example, support for our decorators, uh, you know, we have our own class lighting element. Uh, we add all the, you know, Salesforce metadata and we add, um, you know, things like uh, styling using lighting design systems. 
we add security using Locker, uh, and also uh, you know metadata of Salesforce, right? So that it can be moved from one environment to another environment. So we we add so many things. So as you can see, right, web components, and then we have this LWC engine, and then we have this uh, specific Lightning web components for Salesforce, which has the Salesforce metadata uh, context to it. Uh, there so is one thing one thing worth to mention is that web components is a standard. Mm -hmm. So Lightning Web Components uses the standard that uh, was defined for creating specifically web components. Got it. So uh, here, if we are learning web components uh, with Lightning, we are learning the standards, like the normal standards to develop web applications with JavaScript. Awesome. Yeah. Th thanks, Julian. And that is also, uh, you know, one of the, the core aim of this Lightning Web Components is, right, to align with the standards, right? And you will see when we code today, right, we'll be using JavaScript, uh, we'll be using HTML, right, um, and CSS. So all of these technologies that are standard, essentially, those are getting used. So if you are a Salesforce developer, this is also a right time for you to actually look into JavaScript, learn JavaScript, uh, you know, learn HTML, learn CSS. I know that, you know, we have been a bit spoiled by the Visual Force framework that we had before, Julian. So we had a Visual Force framework before, um, you know, to build our UIs, and those were like you can treat them as the components. Uh, so we never really worried about sort of learning the true HTML and you know um, the the JavaScript uh, in that much detail, essentially. You know, because a lot of things Salesforce gave us out of box. So it's going to be a learning. It's going to be a journey, and you know we have different sessions lined up. And I know Julian, you are planning for some more in the next year, right? To help all our developers sort of uh, you know learn JavaScript from the from the ground up. Anyway, let's move on to our first activity for today, yeah. which will That's... sorry, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Julian. You're saying something, Julian. No, I was just saying that that's true. Next year, next year we are going to have more JavaScript and Node.js content that I'm creating for you all. Awesome, thank you. Uh, okay, so today our first activity is to actually build these lighting uh, web component to show the inventory list. And Julian, we did a prototype last session with Sketch plugin, right? And we pretty much used a standard, lay, you know, standard. Uh, base components actually in the sketch plugin to arrive at this um, layout that we have. And, you know, we are using some, because we are using those standard base components, today also we are going to be using those base components itself to build it. Um, and, you know, uh, our repo, the eCar repos also have, uh, you know, coded this already. Um, so I'm going to do my own version, uh, you know, using base components and SLDS, right? Um, so definitely we can compare and contrast at the end if, if we get some time about, you know, our solution here. Um, but again, it's going to be live code. So I want everyone to like sort of join, raise your questions. You know, we have Holyon monitoring the chat as well, so he can help you with answers. Um, so this component, right, um, again, it's a, it's a list of um, cards. You can say it's a list of cards, right? So if you see what I've highlighted in the, in the red, that needs to be built first, right? So we need to build these cards first, and then it's a it's just a repetition of those cards. But we need to manage the layouts, etc. So why don't we get started, Julian, with our uh, IDE? Okay, so okay, you know, to, yeah, to save time, I've already created a scratch arc here, Julian, and you know, we covered how to create uh, scratch arcs in one of our uh, previous sessions. Uh, so if you know if you are very new to like creating scratch args and setting up your development workflow, do watch them. Uh, but I've created a scratch arg. Essentially, it has nothing. It's just an empty scratch arg at this point. And there are a couple more things that I did. Uh, you know, to to set my uh, environment. So one of one of them I did, Julian, was to install a local development server plugin. So if if I type sfdx plugins. So you will see that there is one specific plugin that's there in my machine, which is lwc-dev-server, right? So you can actually install this plugin by just saying sfdx plugins install, and then just typing the name of the plugin, which is at salesforce-lwc-dev-server. 
So let's uh, uh, install this if you have not. And the reason why we need this plugin is because we're gonna be doing local development, meaning you know we, we are not gonna go to the org and develop and refresh our screens. The idea of the local development is you can like pretty much prototype and build your components uh, rapidly, you know, without sort of having to refresh your screens, push your code to, to Salesforce. At the end, we will have to push the code to the Salesforce arc, but you know, it could be after, uh, you know, we have gone through a lot of our development uh, cycle here, right? So that's why wholly on what I did is I installed this plugin so that I can do my local development server. And all you need is that uh, uh, plugin and uh, you know, that's that gives you that local developer environment that we need. Now there's one more thing I want to mention um, before we actually get into the code. That is, uh, you know, the local development server, right, will only work if you have a scratch org. So it actually requires a scratch org. Now you, you cannot just scaffold a project and expect the local development server to actually function because it is linked to the scratch org. There are some things that we take from the org. So that's why you have to create a scratch org, authenticate to it, um, and then essentially uh, have this local development server plugin and we should be up and running, okay? Um, so, so Julian, let's name our component as inventory card. And watch the naming convention here. It's it's uh, what we call it as kebab case, which means you know we start with a word, which is all will be in small, and then we the next word, the first letter will be in caps. And I'm gonna show you what happens uh, or how do we sort of reference this in uh, in the other components? Like how do we compose uh, the components? Like this boils down to C dash inventory dash card. So we'll we'll look at that. So it's important to follow the naming convention. That's the first thing. So I scaffolded a project here, right? It gave me a template. It gave me the that little scaffold code. Um, and also, it also gave me a meta XML. Uh, we, we're gonna talk about meta XML later, but um, we got this template, right? Now, how do we actually preview it? So you go left click it and click on preview component locally and select desktop browser. Now you can set up for mobile app as well. Um, you know, I'll share some documentation probably at the end or in the in the chatter group. Um, so this is the local development server, right? It's up and running, and we have uh, we have the the inventory card, right? So so hold on. So if I if I type something right and save it, you will see that it auto refreshes and it automatically gives you um, the the updated uh, you know preview of the component. So that's so cool, right? Because I'm I'm just saving, you know, saving the content, and it's you know it's basically, uh, you know, sort of displaying on, on the fly. Okay, um, all right. I I, I want to add uh, some things now yeah. up to this point, as a reminder of of people that is joining us and maybe missed the first two episodes. Uh, when we were talking about developer tools, we mentioned Oakleaf, which is the uh, CLI framework for that we created here at Salesforce, that mm -hmm. Salesforce and Heroku uses. And we mentioned that uh, the Salesforce CLI and the Heroku CLI is extensible through plugins. Mm -hmm. So these plugins are created also using JavaScript. And this is why you are going to find these plugins on NPM which is the package registry for uh, for JavaScript. So in the Got chat, it. I just shared the link of the Lightning Web Component Dev Server. So you can take a look at the installation instructions. And also it has an example using the LWC recipes uh, repository. So you can start playing with it. OK. So that was uh, a, a reminder for, for, for people. Yeah, perfect. And and Julian, you know, so what we are trying to build is this card component to begin with, right? Because we want to get one of the cards and then, uh, you know, once we get like one card working, then we can have a component, which will be a list that can repeat over the data, right? Um, so as you can see, it's a card, right? And again, uh, when we are building Lightning Web Components on Salesforce, I want to say that we have invested a lot in actually giving you some base components. So you should really ideally start from the base components. Um, and what are base components? They are basically a, a set of components in the Lightning namespace. 
uh, you will see that all of them have a syntax which begins with lightning dash. So they are in the lightning namespace, uh, unlike your components, which will be the C namespace. Uh, but uh, you know, those are in the lightning namespace and those are like already baked components that have a lot of functionality in it. There's a lot of JavaScript code that you can um, sort of get out of the box without having to like, you know, um, manage yourself, right? So one of the components I know that Lightning Card is one of the components that I would like to start with because it gives me a basic simple card. So why don't we copy paste? Um, we copy paste from here and then um, essentially modify, um, essentially modify our code, right? Uh, to fit to our stuff. So again, you know, if you type now, one of the features that I like here is, you know, if your design token is wrong, it's, you know, we have this SLDS validator extension um, that I've installed. Again, that uh, that extension is a part of the Salesforce extension pack, Visual Studio Code plugins, right? Or extensions. So you can actually quickly fix that. Um, so let's just quickly fix that. So you see there are some code that is wrong in the docs itself, right? But this was like really smart enough to actually tell us. Um, anyway, we just save this, Julian, and we should see a card. Um, so we see this card, but we know that our stuff. So let's let's look at where where is our stuff, right? So we need so we we need a badge, you know, instead of this button, right? We don't need the footer, right? And we also don't need the header. Uh, instead, we need an image, right? So let's quickly change our code to actually, um, you know, do all of those. So I'm gonna get rid of the card here, right? We don't need the footer. I'll keep the body same because I think we can reuse it for um, the uh, the text elements that are there here. Um, so let's keep that same. And we know that this is not gonna be a lightning button. It's gonna be a uh, a batch. Now, Julian, one of the things to note is there is a slot, right? And slots are really good concept in Lightning Web Components. So what is a slot is, it's a placeholder in your component where you can actually put up your own, um, you know, component, or it could be a HTML markup, as long as you have the same name. Like for example, actions is the name. So let's say I replace a lightning button with a lightning badge. I still have to make sure that I have a slot card actions. As long as I have that, you know, you will see that it's easily replaceable. So slots are like placeholders where you can have another component or like HTML element. Right, a pretty interesting concept, you know, to me, slots. And this is how you actually build your components, right? When you are building your components, you you have to, you know, make your components as dumb as possible and provide things like slots because then, you know, it becomes more reusable. You know, let's say something can be abstracted out, you should make them as a, as a slot. Yeah. Another another thing worth to mention is that the lining base components are also available to the open source version of Lightning Web Components. Mm -hmm. So for the eCars project, we are using uh, Lightning Web Components both on the Salesforce application and on the external customer application that we deployed to Heroku. So on that external customer application, we are using also Lightning Web Components and the Lightning based components that I just shared in the chat. So you can also use most of them if you are developing with LWC outside platform. Yeah, so so you, you look at this, Julian. So I, I you know I got the same thing. I, I replaced the, the button with the badge now, right? It's all looking good, except that I want to change this and make this class. Um, I think I, I can go with this success class. Is it called success? There you go. Um, let's see. So we have the documentation actually to help us, right? So we go to the documentation and look at, right? So we have this SLDS theme class called success, which kind of gives me that green thing that I'm seeing here, right? So there's there's a one class for making it green. There is one for making it, um, if, if you put like errors, right? And you can actually look at these utility classes here by just going to this utility classes and they show you Sorry, not this one, this one, colors, right? So they give you different things, right? So these are different variations of colors that you can really change by just copy pasting this class. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna copy paste that. So let's get back, copy paste. That should give me the thing to green, right? Moving in the right direction. Um, 
Okay, so now definitely we need to put that um, little image, right? So I, I know that Julian, we have these images on the, I think we have it on the, um, we on the S3, I guess, you know, so we can just directly copy the URL. Um, let's see if I have that. So I have some data just to help me um, here. So I'm gonna copy the, the image URL. Let's copy the image URL, Julian. So where we are, so source. So we have the card, we have the source, right? Um, let's see. Okay, so we have it, you know, and obviously it needs to be small. It needs to, you know, we this screen needs to actually go, um, you know, and go to multiple rows or, you know, uh, basically have multiple number of them. We'll come back to that, but let's actually build out the rest of it. So rest of it, what do we have? Um, we have three things here. We have model, we have performance, and we have, win number right um okay so let's let's put some text here um so i want to put some text let's say let's just hard code it for time being Julian, and then we can show our developers how they can sort of so we have three elements three paragraph elements so i'm gonna create them so we have model one we have i'm just gonna change it to performance here performance uh, and then we have win I'm gonna just put some win here win let's say one two three for time being so let's see how it looks okay um that looks can you add a little bit of zoom to the other window so we can uh this window or this one the local development server that one local development how about now no, not the code. The code was good. It was for the local development server. Uh, okay. Sorry. Um, that, this that one. one. Yeah. This one. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's zoom it. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. So as you can see, right? So we've got this and pretty much aligned to the one. I think we made, we can make this bold. Um, again, standard HTML, right? Nothing fancy. We are not doing anything fancy, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to the fancy stuff now. Okay, so so Julian, so we built this this one, right? But uh, you you know the variables, right? So when when we actually look at this screen, we have a lot of variables. Like for example, um, you know this badge styling as well as the the content is gonna change, right? Um, the car images can change. The the data that's there on the bottom can actually change, right? And, uh, you know, so, and our idea he, here is we build a card and then we compose this list with iteration of these cards. That means, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a, a inventory, um, let's say I, I'm gonna call it as inventory uh, component. That's gonna be composed out of lighting card component, similar elements, but it will pass the data to this component. And that's, that's, uh, that's why we need this um, decorators so that we can pass the data back uh, from the parent component to the child component, right? So in this case, I'm gonna create one more parent component. Um, let me call that as inventory. Let's let's create that as well. I'm gonna just call it as inventory, which is gonna be, so I'm gonna say inventory. And da, 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 da. So we have this inventory component, right? Again, this inventory component is blank for the time being, but it's gonna be built out of this lightning cards. Um, and yeah, so let, so we have these variables, right? Like the, the label, the, the class is gonna change, the image is gonna change, these texts are gonna change, right? So why don't we actually create our decorator, right? So we can make an um, API, right? So we can import an API, which is called decorator essentially, that allows us to bind the data one way between the, between the, the template and the, um, the card, right? So we're gonna say API at API, and then the API will be vehicle. Um, and then Julian, so here's where I want to say, okay, so I'm gonna assume that my vehicle has, um, you know, it's an, it's, it's an object. Let's, let's assume it's an object for the time being, right? It's an object and it will have um, those variables. Like for example, um the label right and the 
and the class, right? Um, and the, the image URL, and then one for the model name, other one for uh, the performance, and another one for the win, right? So why don't I, okay, so why don't I command shift tab, and then why don't I copy some data to, to help me um, save some time, right? So really what I need is this data, right? Again, I don't want to take a lot of time. Um, so we go here and we construct this. Um, okay, so that's, okay, uh, there we go. Okay, so one of the other things, Julian, right? So we have Prettier and I forgot to install that. So I'm gonna run an NPM install um, so that I can have the Prettier um, so that I, you know, I don't want to keep formatting and, you know, uh, sort of um, taking a bunch of time here. So we'll use Prettier so that we can format our code components. Um, so it's gonna be installing the Prettier in the back end. Uh, but let's actually replace these labels with, let's say, I'm gonna say vehicle. So this is how we reference it. So you say vehicle dot, um, let's say this is the status, right? So vehicle dot status. Now again, no, we don't need this commas. You might, you know, this is, this is an old habit of me as a Visual Force developer. You know, we always used to encode everything in, uh, you know, in the in the commas and even in the R components we did that way. Um, anyway, so let's actually quickly uh, sort of get through this um, and then the images two, 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 two. and what do we have the image URL right? So vehicle dot image URL um, and then I want to say title so this can go as vehicle dot title. Vehicle dot title here, and then this is the package number. Okay, so this was the package number. So vehicle dot package number, package number what was it? Uh, okay. Now JavaScript, you have to be very, very, um, very, very, uh, uh, you know, case. It's it's a case sensitive. So if you miss, you know, it's not gonna work. And, you know, that's that's one of the differences, Julian, with Apex, right? In Apex, if you, uh, you know, if basically if you change something, um, uh, you know, let's say you mess up your capitals versus small, you know, it's, it's a case insensitive, so it doesn't apply, but um, JavaScript, you have to be like really, um, so let's save this, Julian. Um, let's come back to our local development server and see how it's looking. Uh, wait, 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 where, where am I? Okay, did we miss up something? Did not, it looks good. It, lo go. it looks good. Um, so now let's actually build. So now let's actually build. Um, so now we have it variables. So, so that way when I actually use the, the inventory card, in my inventory component, I can pass in the API. That means, you know, this thing, right? The API actually becomes, a, uh, it becomes, a, a, you know, a parameter or what do you call that? Property? <laughs> property, right? So this becomes a property now for the front end, right? So for example, Julian, so we have this uh, inventory template, right? So now what I can do is I can use a repeater, right? So um, again, now we need an array here. So we need an array. Let's actually call it as vehicles array, right? Um, so I'm gonna say it's an object. So we the, the previous one was an object because single variables, right? Now it's, it's no more an object. It's essentially uh, a list of rows of records, right? Um, so now we need an ability to iterate over it. And that's where, you know, the, the LWC, um, like really adds a lot of, um, utilities, you know, for you to build an enterprise application because you need those repeaters, you need conditionals, right? So, um, 
Yeah, and one more uh, place where I would recommend is, you know, if you want to quickly learn about various features is actually go to lwc.dev, right? Um, and where it teaches all the fundamentals, like about templates, about data bindings, about re-rendering the life cycle, right? Um, so the reactivity, right? Like the, the properties that we are using. Um, so in this case, it's like rendering the list, right? So we essentially are uh, using, uh, we're gonna be using this um, template tag actually uh, to to repeat uh, a certain uh, component, right? So uh, shift tab, let's actually get back. So we're gonna be repeating uh, Julian. So for each vehicle, right? Because that's what we have uh, here, right? And the, the thing is this has to be the vehicle, okay? Right? Now, Julian, one of the, the things we need here is to actually use our layouts. Um, layouts are like pretty um, common in, in, an, in a CSS framework, right? And, and talk us a bit, Julian, in your experience, like, you know, when we, when we want to build a grid system or a layout, right? Uh, I know that a lot of the CSS frameworks provide these grid systems and, uh, you know, in Lighting Web Components, we have this lighting layouts um, that are really good start if you want to, you know, sort of uh, have that grid system sort of working for you. Um, so talk us through a bit about the grid system while I find the, the lighting layout component here. Sure. Well, normally on web development, uh, this is done by using CSS. Uh, you can find both the CSS grid, which is a new feature of CSS that allows you to create grids and layouts. Uh, you can use Flex, which is another option of CSS that allows you to, to manage that type of layouts. But it is always better to have a design system like the one we are, we are using right now, the Salesforce mm -hmm. Lightning Design System. Because personally, I am not a, a designer. Or, okay. Uh, like, yeah. Same like, here. Like, Same here. Like a skilled front-end web developer, so I always rely on libraries or design systems that solve that issue for me. So this is this is yeah. why we are using this is why we are using the Salesforce Lightning Design System. Also, because we want to have this application be uh, consistent with the full uh, Lightning UI for our application. Yeah, yeah. But so like, yeah. The power of Lightning Web Components is that you don't need to use the the Salesforce Lightning Design System. You can use whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So you can make your compon components uh, with any custom design, the one you like. So if you are a graphic designer and you have the CSS skills, you will be able to do like amazing interfa interfaces. Yeah. So yeah. So so hold on. So let's uh, let's look at lighting layout. So I want to use lighting layout, right? And you know, one of the things I like about these documentation is you know um, we we have a playground here. You know, so you can like really change stuff. Uh, documentation aligned here so that you can learn about different features um, or different ways to you know size your layouts, right? Um, you know, align your columns. Like you need two column width. You need four column width, right? So you have different ways to do it. And, you know, I don't have the time to actually go over all of these, uh, but these are really good. You know, you should actually take some time and, you know, basically play with the playground and try with different options so that you understand what type of layouts are actually possible through this grid utility classes and the lightning layouts. For now, I'm gonna use the lightning layout, right? Um, it's a very powerful thing. And, you know, if you're building any component, right, uh, if you've designed it using lightning layouts, it, it makes it really easy. Uh, also, these are responsive. That means, you know, if you are like using it on uh, mobile devices, you can build your layout such a way that it adds that responsiveness automatically for you. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna, um, okay, so I'm gonna use the lighting layout, right? Um, so I'm going to say, okay, it's a, everything will be inside a lighting layout, right? Um, and what else? So, um, and then we need that lighting layout item, right? So we need the lighting layout item. Um, I can add some padding. So the other thing, right, is 
like adding padding and margins and all of these stuff, Julian, um, it's, you know, as, as you said, you're not design, we are all developers, right? So I, I love what, uh, you know, the, the lighting design system has done. So they have given us utilities so that you don't have to actually worry about them. For example, if I want to do a little bit of padding, I can go and look at some of these classes and these classes are built using BEM notation. So essentially all that I need to worry about is knowing what class does what, and I have this reference, right? So I use these as references and then, you know, let's say I want a top margin, right? Um, I can just say top none, meaning we don't want any margins at the top, right? Um, similarly, I want a, a padding with a small space, right? Uh, so they have actually sorted the dimensions um, and also like different type of combinations of margins and paddings you need, the layouts you need, the grids you need, you name it, like the boxes you need, the borders you need, right? So so that's that's one of the, the uh, you know, the beauty of lighting design system is like it has so many utilities, we call them as utilities. So it makes it really easy for us to just copy paste the class and go with it, you know? So we don't have to like spend a lot of time. Um, Anyway, so uh, where we are in this thing. So so we are actually coming to the lighting layout, right? Now, one of the, the things is we also need a unique key element. Whenever we are actually using uh, a, an iterator, we need a key, which has to be a unique element, okay? So in this case, my key will be vehicle.win because I know that win is, generally it's Salesforce record ID because that's unique. So you have to pick something unique so that that error actually goes away. Um, but yeah, so we have the lining layout, okay? Um, and then what else do we need here? So, okay, so we need to bring that card component back, right? So let's bring that card component. So all that I need to do is say C dash, and then the inventory, right? And dash the card component, right? Um, so we do this and then because I have the API sort of defined in my card, right? this thing actually now can go as a property here. And that's that's what an API decorator does. It allows you to give, it gives you uh, basically a property that, you know, that a parent component can actually pass in. So all that I need to do now, Julian, is actually pass the one vehicle element to it, right? So that way I have um, things working. So now, okay, so now I have this, right? Um, what else I need to do? So, okay, so let's get, actually let's get the full data in here. Okay, so let's save this. I, yeah. I love that when you are doing the for each, like the iteration over the list of vehicles, yeah, you can pass the full object to the child component. Yeah, usually, so, so that, yeah, that, that is- That for me is great. Yeah, that, you know, that feature, because of that feature, I always recommend folks to, use the objects, uh, I mean, use the the full object because, you know, you can stub in all the property. It becomes less confusing. If you declare primitive, your code is also like a lot lengthier, right? Um, so basically I save this and yeah, so the formatter, you know, so you can always format this, you know, as again, I, I was talking about, right? So we can always format it, format document with prettier because we have the prettier. I'll make it nice and easier to read, right? So we have this, and now let's come back to our HTML, right? So we have the HTML, let's also format this actually. So select this, um, there's a shortcut key as well. I, I generally prefer to do this way, but you, I usually set up a shortcut key. Um, okay, so we have this, Julian, so now, Okay, so now we have this. Let's come back to that inventory card and get rid of this because, you know, it's no more a constant, right? It's no more a constant. It's a it's a full blown thing, right? So we come back to this. So let's actually preview that component. Again, you just say preview component locally. We should be previewing something. Fantastic, it's almost there, Julian, except you know, I want to show some more things, right? Like for example, what we can do is, um, so again, this is like, everything is horizontally sort of space, right? So if I add more, it's just going to create a scroll bar, right? 
So we can actually go multiple rows uh, if if you want, Julian. So we can we can go with the um, the multiple rows as well. So um, you know there there are certain properties actually in the in the uh, lighting layouts that we can take for our advantage. Like for example, specifying the multiple rows. You know. So um, so let's specify the multiple rows and play with the size element actually. So one of the cool features here is actually the lighting item has this feature called size where 12 is like one column. Like for example, if I do 12, right? I come back and say, it's gonna be one, only one, right? Because 12 is my size. That's the, the, the standard size, right? So if I go and say four, right? That means I should see three elements, right? And it's a scroll bar here. We should see three elements. Now let's say we need something like four, we say three. Again, it's it's simple math with, you know, it assumes that your screen is 12, right? It is a 12 column. And what you do is actually, uh, you do the simple math. Let's say I need four number of cats here. All I need to do is 12 divided by four, which is three, right? Now I also need, okay, so as you can see, less of thing is going down like this, right? Um, let's say I need to actually create multiple rows, right? Let's say I need a multiple rows of, let's say three each. So I can, I can do, so there's a, there's a property actually on the lighting layout. I think it's on the lighting layout. And the other thing is Julian, if you actually hover over this, right? You see, it shows you all the properties, you know, that I can uh, pretty much see. Like for example, I want to horizontally align it, right? With an alignment option of space, I can actually do that with uh, horizontal align, right? And say a space, right? Auto completion, right? That's the, the, the fun part. So let's say I need, uh, okay, so I need to use that multiple rows now. So I'm gonna say multiple, uh, oops, it jumped out of me. Okay, so I'm gonna say multiple rows. Okay, so if I say multiple rows, now again, we don't, this is one of those attributes where it doesn't read anything, you know, it's it's one or false, it's one or zero, right? So now you see Julian that we have, you know, multiple rows, right? Um, laid out in the format that we need. Um, so yeah, so how many minutes we have? Okay, so let's, let me take eight more minutes to actually talk through uh, the eventing, right? So what, how do we, so, so what are some of the best practices in terms of eventing, right? Um, so you can pretty much mess up with events in Lightning Web Components, Julian, if, if you do not have a strategy, like, you know, uh, because events allow you to pass uh, data, right? Um, so you have events in capturing phase, in bubbling phase, um, you know, you can release an event from parent to child, child to parent, right? So you can pretty much mess up your architecture if you do not have a consistent design pattern. And our best practice is whenever you are passing data from parent to child, always, you know, pass as properties like we did, you know. But if you want to bubble up an event from child to parent, then you use the custom events. So it's it's pretty uh, standard rule and it's the role in any framework, actually, you know, you never sort of pass a, a, a event from parent to child because you can easily mess it up. Uh, and there might be so many events and, you know, you might need a strategy to actually, uh, you know, handle those events. So best practice, child to parent, always use events, um, you know, always use events to, to fire up um, from child to parent, but use props, uh, properties from parent to child. So let's add uh, let's add a fun CSS. We, we we never added a CSS. Did you observe one thing, Julian? I pretty much wrote the code without writing CSS, um, any line of CSS code, you know. And that was my aim when I came today. It's like I don't want to you know write and deal with CSS today. I just want to um, sort of work uh, all through the Lightning Design System classes and not write my custom CSS. But now I'm going to write CSS because now I think I, I, I need I need a CSS here. Um, so let's let's write some CSS actually. So I want to so I want to add a functionality, Julian, which kind of demonstrates how to like pass events from parent to uh, sorry from ch uh, from child to parent. So let's say when I click on one of the cards, I want to mute all other cards. You know, 
Um, so that's the functionality that I'm building. I click on one of the cards. I want to mute all other cards. Um, and similarly, you know, I need some pointers so today, what, right? What, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by mute? That's a good question. So muting, when I say what I mean by muting is I want to make other cars blur or change its opacity, you know, in terms of CSS oh, language. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Nice. So that's the Got functionality. It. Let's see if you can do it in like next five minutes or, you know, or so. So let's, uh, let's give a crack at it. Um, so what else I need? So, okay. So first I need to build my CSS here. So I'm going to say inventory, and this is how you add the CSS Ulyon is, um, you say inventory card dot CSS. It has to be the same name, just the file name changes to dot CSS, right? So I'm going to have a class called pointer. Okay. It's my CSS class for the child element, right? And, uh, you know, I, to do that, I just need the, the cursor here. I'm going to say cursor and the cursor will be pointer. Again, you know, this is where CSS comes in. You have to know certain things in CSS. There's, there's no like really shortcut uh, for this, right? And then Julian, we also need a mute. And that was what I was talking about. And mute, will, what it will do is it will reduce the opacity to say 50%, right? So it goes from zero to 100. So, so we go from opacity, right? And then we also need we also need the pointer here as well. So I'm gonna add that, right? And then I'm gonna also construct one more class, right? So which will be pointer. Um, so pointer not allowed, basically. Let's call it as pointer not allowed. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna, so let's say I've clicked on an element, right? What I want to do is I want to say there is no cursor for that, okay? Um, so let's, let's see. So I'm going to say cursor not allowed. Again, this is a property. It's going to auto populate, right? Okay. So this is the CSS class I've constructed. Now what I need is actually, how do I like, you know, add a event handler here, right? So I have the, the, the lightning card. Let me actually add a div, you know, let me add a div essentially, which says div. And I'm going to create a class element on my vehicle object. Um, I'm going a little fast because, you know, I'm trying to see if we can finish this. Um, so I'm going to be adding a little bit of class element here, Julian, right? Um, again, I'll add this uh, style element and this will be one of those styles that we created. Um, and then what else do I need? Okay, so I have the class element. I have this. Uh, I need the event, right? And that's where the on click comes into picture. So I can have an event, uh, essentially. Let's close this div. Let's close this div, right? So on click, what I need to do, right? So it will be basically a function, a JavaScript function uh, that I'm gonna do again. Control A, you can always format the document with prettier, right? Um, so handle click. Now this has to be written in our code here, right? And this is where the the whole um, concept of um, the eventing comes. So we are gonna use a JavaScript event here, right? So we're gonna use the custom event of JavaScript, which basically, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a constant here called um, click event, okay? So I'm gonna say new custom event. And the custom event actually has two things. It has one, which is the name of the event. Um, we can call it as card select event, Julian. Does that sound good, the name? And then um, we can also pass in the, yeah, we can also pass in the data from parent to child. We can pass in the data from the parent to parent to the child, right? So I can say detail, um, detail is how you pass the data, right? Um, and then I can pass in uh, uh, something like, for example, I know that win is the unique thing um, for these set of components, right? So I can pass in a win. Okay, so so let me actually uh, pass in the win. So win is the data that I'm passing. And this, again, um, we know this. So this is already there. So we're gonna be using this vehicle's win to pass. Now, again, it has to be a unique element. Now, why I'm passing this, Julian, is because I can identify which element I have clicked. You know, if there is a unique thing, and if I click that element, and if I can capture in my parent component, 
I know that, okay, this is um, the, the specific card that was clicked. And then I can, you know, for the remaining ones, I can simply change the CSS, right? So now, Julian, um, we need to dispatch this and we have a syntax for that, which is dispatch event. So you say dispatch event um, and we say click event. So the click event is dispatch. So this is how you actually dispatch uh, a event, right? Um, to um, any component essentially. And the, uh, the listener can actually listen by using an on on this. So, so card select, right? So we select the name and then how do we listen for this is by adding an on and the name of it. And then this should actually call a function, right? So we can say handle card select, right? So that could be the name of our handler. So in my handler, I can actually, so this will call, essentially this is gonna call the, uh, a function that I need again in my uh, JavaScript code, right? So let's actually come back here, handle select, right? So now it, this has a parameter called event so that I can actually read the detail. So I can say event.detail and that will have the data that we are actually passing from the child component, right? So simple communication actually between the parent and the child component, right? So, um, okay, let's actually, let me see if I can quickly do this. Um, again, so for a lot of you, right, um, you should actually get familiar with what we call it as um, a map, right? Uh, a map essentially, um, uh, talk us a bit about map function um, Julian, while I code this. Sure. So a map uh, function in JavaScript is an operation that allows you to do a transformation over an array or a list of elements. Mm -hmm. So the map function receives a callback function or a function that is going to be applied to each element of the array. Mm -hmm. And the result of the map is going to be that modified array. So instead of, or of using a for loop and mutating the array inside the for loop, we just use the map and in the map we write a function and that function will mutate the data of the array and return that information as a new array. So pretty much what Mo is doing there is uh, iterating yeah. over the vehicles array and changing the style yeah. for the specific car that was selected. Exactly, exactly. So what I'm doing here is, Julian, so I know that the event.detail.win has the data, right? So I'm iterating over all the elements and making sure that if this is actually equal, right, then my class style, right, my class style will be pointer not allowed, right? Um, other ways it's mute, right? So that's all I'm doing. So what I'm doing here is again, I trading over all the elements, finding out if this was the selected and assigning it as a class style, depending on, uh, you know, depending on what I need. So for that specific element, I need a pointer not allowed class for the rest of them. I need a mute class. So it's, it's actually that simple, right? Um, let me complete the else. Sorry. Let me one sec. Okay, so it's actually jumping a lot today. So yeah, so the else, else we want to give it a class style of, um, let's say a pointer to begin with, right? Um, yeah, it could be a simple pointer class. So pointer is like our default class, Julian. And again, as you said, right, we have to make sure that we return the function, right? So we return that vehicle other ways uh, that's how the maps work, basically. So you have to return that uh, modified element, right? Um, exactly. Yeah, so I I think we are good. Um, I think we are good, except we can do one more thing here, is actually add the class style to all of them. Um, Julian, so we can, we can add a default style of pointer, right? Um, so just, just let's add it so that it has a default styles and you know it doesn't mute everything by default so again look look at the you know look at what i'm doing you know i'm i'm i know as a javascript developer right you are tend to actually play much with dom right but in lightning web components actually the idea is 
um, you know, you don't really need to worry about the DOM, you know, because we have the bindings actually sort of helping you, you know, so you can actually play with the data and that's that's the strategy here, you know, framework automatically handles all of the things. So let's see, Julian, if we have really got through this. I know we have five minutes left. Okay, uh, maybe we're missing something here. Let's see if we can actually troubleshoot. Oh, we have a duplicated key somewhere. Okay, that could be because my data is not correct. Um, could be because my data is not correct. So um, let's see where is my data. Let's come back to our data. Da, 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 da. Okay, so yeah, we need we need these to be unique. Actually, there might be some data which might not be unique. I'm gonna add a bunch of characters so that I can see. Yeah, you know, I can make this really unique. A win. Um, that's the and the class style, right? I want to make sure that our. Oh wait, okay, yeah, that that seems correct. Uh, okay, so vehicle. Okay, so the win is getting passed. Uh, let's see. I think I'm missing something, but we'll we'll come back to that. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Okay, it's definitely not functioning. Obviously, live code. We must. Oh, wait, wait. The event itself is not getting. We can do a little bit of debugging. Let's see. We have like four minutes. Let's spend like a couple of minutes, uh, Julian, just to give them an idea of how to debug if things are not going going in your way, right? And the easiest way uh, to debug this is by using console.log, right? The favorite thing. So let's say even card clicked. Let's see, card clicked, right? Let's see if this is firing actually. Okay, we have this. Now, is it, are we listening for that, right? So let's come back and look at this and see. Okay, so on card select, we have handle card select. Okay, handle card select. That's fine. Let's look at, okay. Okay, so let's see this. So here, right, we've received the event console.log, received event. Ah, no, not there. Sorry. Okay, um, let's see. So received event. Let's see where this is actually uh, broken. So I click on that. Okay, I am also receiving and that means it must be it must be in one of our logic here. Julian. Um, okay, so pointer not allowed. It must be in one of our logic here. Uh, return vehicles, return vehicles. Okay. What about this vehicles? Okay, so one of the other things Julian I forgot is sometimes we need this track so that um, you know, it actually renders back. Um, track is our reactive element so that it actually mm, renders yeah. back, right? So let's see if that, that was it. There you go, we got it working. Super. Yeah, we so you, we're missing the reactivity. Yeah. So so again, you know, reactivity is a concept. You know, if if you are using an object, right, make sure to use that track so that it adds a reactivity to it. Um, so as you can see, right, Julian, so we are clicking this, it's muting everything, uh, you know, um, I wanted to take this example and show so that, uh, you know, we can show. Okay, so I, I think we are almost the end of the time. Maybe we we have a little bit of content left. Uh, but again, I'm going to share the slides, you know, um, next session, unfortunately, we won't be able to cover the LMS part of it. Um, but you know we have the helpful references and i hope that it it's going to help you definitely we'll bring back some sessions on lms um you know if if needed just let us know if you need uh, more sessions on lms etc so we are there um julian and then we have this sample app gallery again we have a lot of code like this on the sample app gallery and then catch us on trailblazer community okay so we should sign off actually julian because i know that we are almost time and you know our next uh, speakers are online. So again, thank you so much for joining.